Now to see some of those special cases. So our first example, both of those equations are already in the slope-intercept form. So we don't have to solve anything. Um, I'm going to label the first one L1, second one L2, so when we draw it on the plane together, we can label each of them. So from the first line, what is my slope? So the value on the front of x is 3, and the y-intercept goes through 0, 4. So we can graph that line. Passes through the point 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. From there, I move according to my slope, up 3, over 1. I'm probably out of frame, so what else could I have done? Down 3, back 1. Down 3, back 1. So this is our first line. We call that one L1. And the second line. What do you notice about that one? It has the same slope, different y-intercept. So, what's it going to be looking like in regards to this line? Going through a different point on the y-axis, but we still have the same slope. Up 3 over 1. Up 3 over 1. So, how are they related? Same slope, different y-intercept. And, what are we looking at? Parallel lines. So will we ever have a solution to the system? They're never touching. I can never choose one point that satisfies the yellow line that will also satisfy the pink. So in this case, our solution set is empty. We don't have any. There won't be any numbers or any um, pairs that satisfy both lines. So this is called the empty set. It literally just means the set containing nothing. So when we have no solutions, this is the, the terminology and the symbol that we want to talk about and use. All right, next one. These are not in the slope-intercept form, so we need to do a little bit of work. Again, I'm going to label them L1 and L2, so we can talk about them separately. So for the first one, 2x plus 3y is 6. I want to solve for y. I'm going to subtract 2x, divide by 3. So y is negative 2 thirds x plus 2. So our slope is minus 2 thirds. Y-intercept goes through 0, 2. So we can go ahead and graph that first line. So going through the point 0, 2. From there, I move according to my slope, down 2 over 1, 2, 3, down 2 over 1, 2, 3, or what else could we have done? Up 2, back 1, 2, 3. That will also fall on that line. So that was line 1. Now let's go ahead and solve for y in the second line. So negative 8x. Minus 12y is negative 24. I want this one on its own, so I'm going to add 8x to both sides. We want to divide by minus 12. So y is, what does 8 divided by 12 simplify to? We could take 4 out of both. So we're looking at negative 2 thirds x plus, because the negative divided by negative gives us positive, 12 goes into 24 two times. So what do you notice about those two lines? They're exactly the same. They have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So if I'm going to graph it, it's going to lie right on top of this other one. So it's both line 1 and line 2. So what does that mean for our solution set? Since they're the same lines, It doesn't matter what I choose. If I choose this point on the yellow line, it's going to satisfy the pink at the exact same time. Same for any point along this line that goes on for forever. So we have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. But they all have to lie on this line. I can't choose random points out here. It's not going to satisfy them both. So, our set notation for that. We've dealt with the one-dimensional set notation 
Now we're looking at two-dimensional. So instead of just having an x or a y, we're looking at coordinate pairs. So the set of all the points such that they have to lie on this line. So they have to follow the rule 2x plus 3y equals 6. Okay. This form is also equivalent since they are exactly the same line, but we want to have the most simplified version in that set notation. And in the beginning, as we look at this system, what do you notice about the relationship between these two? Is there any way that I could take this one and turn it into the second? Because every single one is multiplied by a factor of what? Times the eight by negative four will get me from here to this next line. So whenever you have a multiple of the line, they are exactly the same line. They just look a little bit different. Because I could take the second one, divide everything by negative four, get to that one. Or take the first one, multiply by negative four, get to the second. So this set notation is important. You're going to see that a lot in this class and in um, classes after this. So go ahead and take the next two systems, solve those two by graphing. What happened in that first case? I'm going to label them again, just as we've done before. They're not solved for the slope intercept form, so we need to do that first so we can graph easily. Or you could use the intercepts, I mean both are equivalent. So if I want to solve this one for y, I need to subtract 4 from both sides. We got the form that we need. And for the second one, if I want to get y on its own, I need to subtract x from both sides. But I need that to be positive, so I'm going to multiply or divide everything by negative. So we're looking at y equals x plus 2. So graphing those, what did they look like? We had the same slope, but different y-intercepts. So the first line goes through minus 1, 2, 3, 4 on the y-axis, and we go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So that was our first line. Second one still had the same slope, but it went through 0, 2, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So relationship, they're never touching, they're parallel. What about our solutions? These are parallel lines, therefore no solution, and our set notation for that is that empty set. Set containing nothing. All right, second one. Anything that you notice about these? It's not always going to be given in this nice form, the standard form where the x's and the y's are together. I could take that first equation and multiply it by what to get me to the second one? Times in it by minus 3 will get me there. So they're the same equation, but let's just go ahead and prove it again, because sometimes it's not so evident that it's going to be exactly the same line, so we'll just behave like normal if we were solving. So I want y on its own. I need to subtract 2x from both sides. It's in that form that we like. Second line. If I want y on its own, we need to move our x-coordinate. 6x minus 12 divided by negative 3 everywhere. So y is equal to minus 2x plus 4. So we just proved, yeah, it's a, the exact same line in both cases. So when we draw it, we only have to draw one. It's going through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. From there, I move down 2 over 1 down 2 over 1, and pretty steep. This is both line 1 and line 2 at the exact same time. So I have infinitely many solutions, since when I plug in point on the yellow line, it's going to satisfy the pink at the exact same time. So we have infinitely many solutions, and what do they look like? They're all points in the two-dimensional plane, so we need an x and a y, and what has to be satisfied? has to lie on that line. Simplest form given is the first one. 2x plus y equals 4. So that tells us you can choose any point along this line, it will satisfy the system, since they are the same lines.
So when we're graphing a system of two equations with two variables, two unknowns, we have those three different results. They either intersect at one point and we have one solution. They don't touch at all, we're looking at parallel lines and there isn't a solution. Or they lie right on top of each other. One is a multiple of the next. And we have infinitely many solutions since they lie exactly on the same line. So the last thing I want to show you is with some technology. So we want to consider this equation. We can solve it algebraically for x, no problem. If I want to get the x's together, what am I looking at doing? I'm going to add x, add 2 to both sides, so 8 is 2x, so x is 4. Okay, we could get there. Another option that you can kind of check or even use this quickly with a calculator, we're not allowed calculators in this class, but it's a good check just to, mm, I don't know, see another way it's represented. So to solve this graphically, what we could do is we could let y be this first left-hand side of the equation. So I'm going to make one line with the expression on the left, one line with the expression on the right. And y equals x minus 2. So if you graph those in your calculator and you look at their intersection point, they have an intersection at the point 4, 2. So we know which x-coordinate satisfies. We've already solved for that one. Now we just have some additional information. If I look at it as a system, they're intersecting. The y-coordinate happens at 2. So this is where they're intersecting. We can look at that as a system now. I know that this point is a solution to the system of this line and this line together. So it's just another way that we can look at and verify um, a solution to an algebra problem or a system. So in your calculator, to actually graph it, if you're not too fond or technologically inclined, you'll want to go into the y equals setting, so upper left of the calculator if you have an 84 or 83, and you'll want to input um, each of these as separate lines. So the first one you could type in 6 minus x, hit enter, then type in x minus 2, hit enter. Once that's in there, go ahead and click the little graph. I think it's upper right of those options. And then just go ahead and trace along the line until you hit the intersection point, and it will give you this information. It will give you the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate together. So eventually we want to move away from graphing. Um, as our means for finding the solution to a system. It can be time consuming, especially on an exam. And if you don't have a nice grid, um, your intersection point could be a little bit off. That could take you more time to hone in on where exactly is it if I adjust them a little bit. So the next part that we're going to look at is a new method that moves away from looking at pictures and moves toward um, solving it algebraically, proving it algebraically.